So I've been using this little video editing macro keyboard that I made for about a month now, maybe a bit more than a month. And I think it's time now to reflect on what functions I use and what I might want to change on it. Firstly, my color coding that I used was a bit naive really, because a lot of these functions don't apply to the clip or the track or the timeline. They apply to whatever you've got selected. So probably this color coding is meaningless, but I think I'll just leave it for now because it actually helps with quick navigation just to find the keys. Anyway, what I discovered was that I didn't use these transport buttons at all. So I just used the mouse on the screen. So I think those need to go. So we'll, oh, the switches come out with them, but I think what we'll do is take these keys out. This is a hot swap keyboard, so the switches come out rather easily, but that's fine. They just plug back in into a little socket that's in there. In spite of the fact that I initially thought that this was going to be used for complex macros and complex, difficult to remember keyboard shortcuts, it turns out to be the opposite. Whilst multi-key shortcuts are awkward, there is a utility in having even single key press shortcuts here in one place, because this keyboard sits under my left hand and it's just really useful to have quick things on there that you can do repeatedly. While the right hand is using the mouse or often the numeric pad on the main keyboard. So it might seem like it's a bit of a waste having an undo and redo button on here when that's just Control Z and Control Shift Z. Control Shift Z in DaVinci Resolve, Control Y in a lot of other applications. So let's say, for example, I apply a color grade to a clip. I can very easily just say, OK, let's have a look at that clip without the color grade, with the color grade without the color grade, with the color grade. I can do very quick comparisons just using undo and redo. That would be quite awkward to do quickly on the keyboard. But here on the keypad, quickly making a comparison between something with a change and without a change, really useful, even though that's a very simple shortcut. So a lot of this is not about simplifying. It's about concentrating all of the useful things under my left hand to make best use of my left hand. Anyway, I decided what else I need. I've got copy, I haven't got cut. Also haven't got delete. Now cut and delete are two different things in DaVinci Resolve. So if you had three clips and you cut the middle one out, it would leave a gap. If you delete the middle one, it'll do a ripple and remove the gap. So I haven't got cut and delete. I haven't got paste on top. I've got this thing which is insert on top. So this takes a clip from the media bin that you're in and adds it on top of all of the tracks. So it doesn't overwrite anything, it puts it on top. I wish there was a function there to do a paste version of that. So there's paste insert, there's paste overwrite. I wish there was kind of paste on top into the nearest empty track. There isn't, so we're gonna to have to do a bodge for that. And then the other thing that's equivalent to this as well, which is add on top, is insert into timeline. So from the media bins, I want to be able to insert a track as well as just add it on top. So I want to insert it at the, at the playhead point and ripple everything along. So I, those are the four functions I've decided to add. I have already printed some new legends for them. So we've got cut, we've got delete, we've got insert at playhead, and then we've got paste on top. So I'm gonna cut those out, get those keys fitted in what I think is the right place, and then We'll go from there. Now I've got to program these keys and make them do those things. So just a really quick run through of all of the functions on this little keyboard. So the find function takes a clip that's already in your line and finds it in your media bin, which is really useful for finding the next video clip if you're adding things one at a time into your timeline. Insert into timeline takes an object from your media bin 
and inserts it at the playhead, rippling the rest of the clips along to make space for it. Delete is mapped literally to the same as the delete key on the main keyboard, and it just removes a clip. So you select a clip, hit delete, it removes it, and ripples the timeline to leave no gap. Cut removes the clip from the timeline, but it also puts a copy of that in the clipboard ready to be pasted somewhere else. Paste on top. Now this is the one I had to bodge with macros. It's not perfect. What it does is it disables the auto select from every track and then pastes in whatever's in the clipboard, which forces DaVinci Resolve to create a new track. So the pasted object goes on top of everything else. It's a bit wasteful because it can create new tracks every time you paste something, but it's the closest I could get to paste on top of everything in an empty track. Undo and redo. I think we've spoken about those enough already earlier in the video. Place on top is similar to the insert key above it. This takes an object from your media bin and inserts it into a vacant track on top of everything that's already there. If there isn't a space, it will create a track. And then the up and down arrows move a clip up or down in the tracks in the timeline. The left and right arrows swap it with the thing next to it. Copy and paste, I don't think I need to talk about. Delete gaps just removes any empty spaces in the timeline and bunches everything up together. Quite useful for tidying up. Paste insert takes whatever's in the clipboard and inserts it at the playhead. So then we've got the select row. So we've got select everything to left of playhead. We've got select main track to left of playhead. Select main track right of playhead and select everything right of playhead. And then the kind of trim row. Ripple trim left cuts the left hand part of a clip off and does a ripple so it moves things along. Trim left does the same kind of thing but it doesn't ripple, it just leaves a gap. Split or cut just cuts a clip into two pieces. Trim right and ripple trim right are the mirror counterparts of the thing I just showed you before. So that cuts the right hand part of a clip off and that one cuts and then shuffles everything along. So I suppose the obvious question is, was it worth it? Has it been worth concentrating those shortcuts over here under my left hand? Has it really made much of a difference? And I'm going to say absolutely yes, it has, especially this bottom row, the trim controls here. This has saved me a huge amount of time. That's something I would previously have done with the mouse and the keyboard. And now it's just just a case of single key press will trim the end of a video, that sort of thing. Having all of the copy, cut, paste and delete functions here concentrated in one place, really useful. Having undo and redo here just as single key presses is surprisingly more useful than you might imagine. So I hope that was an interesting little update. I hesitate to call this the final layout because the whole point of this device is it doesn't need to be final. Nothing needs to be final. If I find that this doesn't quite suit me, I can just change it again. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.